Howdy. What's up? It's me, Darren. Again. You might be wondering why I have this piece of paper in my hand. Today, uh, 10 ways to land the perfect job. Uh, I'm going to share with you what's helped me along the road. Step tip number one. Know the job that you want in your life. Um, in my time, I always listen to other people and not myself. And at the end of the day, you got to listen to yourself to find out what job you want to do for yourself and how you can personally develop on uh, getting into that next um, level. Um, if I could do my time all over again, I would definitely you know, listen to myself rather than to other people. Sure, it's great to get other advice and other opinions, but at the end of the day, the decision's up to you and what, to, what do you want to do with those decisions. So, um, step number two is be yourself. And I think that reflects on a little bit of step number one. Um, be yourself because if you're not yourself you're listening to other people and taking advice from other people where you should be listening to you to yourself um, point number three never say anything bad about your previous employees um, that will always bounce and hit you up the ass because what can actually happen is when you're out in the workplace you can actually get um, you can actually get an old job offered back to you or you could get that promotion that you always wanted in the office and you've applied for another company and said something bad about your previous employees well your boss is going to say shove it up your ass we don't want you go and find another place to work isn't he so uh step number three never say anything bad about your previous employees tip number four building your qualifications and skill level I can't stress that enough about skill level myself. Um, I'm fighting all the time with people on how to get my skill levels up to the next level all the time. And at the end of the day, a qualification is really nothing. It's a skill level that divides the um, human being. So skill level is very, very important. It doesn't matter what career or what industry you're in. If you don't have the skill level to match the qualification you're in, your employees are going to pick up on that very, very carefully and say, well, is he right for my company because he doesn't apply the necessary skills for... Um, the job, so as you're doing your qualifications, it's very important to get your skill levels up. Um, not only for yourself, but for your company and for your co-workers and for your staff, etc. Um, tip number five. Sometimes you have to do your qualifications again. Um, another good pe and other people just realised um, when they did the schooling when I did mine that shit my grades weren't um, up to par um, I passed anyway but I wouldn't mind going back to do schooling all over again just in case if there's various bits and pieces that I missed or uh, just little bits of skills that I need to develop develop and coming bigger um, bigger and stronger there was quite a number of people that I knew that did the qualifications over again just so they can learn different skills and different qualifications and um, developing bigger and better things are good on them for doing it. I actually should have been one of those people uh, myself in my early journey when I just finished my apprenticeship um, rather than doing three years do um, the fourth year and I do think the fourth year is optional in most trades, tradesmen's jobs um, now as we speak. So, um, yeah, so uh, that's another mistake that I um, did. We should do that one day, talk about Darren's um, mistakes. Gee, wouldn't that? Um, um, they'll probably go on for about 50 minutes, not 45. 
Okay, moving along. Um, change your attitude. Change your attitudes. A big, big thing um, in the workplace. Your employees, your staff, your customers, your co-workers, things like that. Always pick up on your attitude uh, when you leave in and when you leave out. And that goes for family, life, um, friends, sporting clubs, um, etc. If you've got a shit attitude, um, people are going to pick up on that and say, well, I really don't want to be around this kid, or I really don't want to be around this adult. Um, let's move on. And if the situation comes to worse, uh, we'll just tell him that his services are no longer required. Um, Step number seven. Even at work, it's more important now than ever, I think, to work on yin and yang. I know it works, you work in various bits and pieces like that, but if you can mix, mix in business with pleasure, more and more reason to do it. I'm not talking about with the females and various bits and pieces like that. Um, I'm talking about if, there's, if that cart that you want to go and see your lunchtime that you're thinking about purchasing or purchasing new equipment for your work or um, you know, or sitting down and having a conversation with somebody about the trip that they want to go on or various bits and pieces like that that's what I'm talking about with the yin and yang very very important and it gets perfect it makes good PR around the workplace and it gets compensation started and it makes the workplace just go how lot quicker than um, slower. So um, PR is another really good one in the workplace that people should start working on from time to time, especially in the police industry. I can't um, stress that enough. Uh, fire and ambulance and various bits and pieces. Um, next. Know the job that's right for you. Um, again, it's all about standing in your self-truth, isn't it? Um, once you're standing in your self-truth and you know the job that you want to do and you want to succeed and you want to work hard, um, your employees are going to love you for that and chances are that your employees' uh, company will actually improve in funds and business and finance and um, etc. because you're doing what you always were meant to be doing and to me that seems to make a huge difference at the end of the day and makes everybody happy and um, finances improve 100% because you're living in your self-truth you're doing what it is that you're meant to be doing in day-to-day -day life and you're making a kick-ass living by doing it and so on and so forth and by doing that you're helping out um, people in general and various bits and pieces like that. No, it's tip number nine. Know your boss, know your clients. Um, Know what your boss wants and know what your client wants. Uh, that's incredibly important. If your boss and your clients are both on the same page, uh, then you're just going to fly through the day more and more so forth. In my early days as a workman, uh, there were moments that there were things that my clients wanted, but things that my boss didn't want. So um, communication is another one of those incredibly important uh, tips that I think that's incredibly important in the workplace because if you don't communicate in the workplace, it's going to be disastrous. Will um, quick. There's been a lot of workplaces that I've been to, and there's just been no communication. And I've gone home, and I've just they're thinking. Why? Why? Um, you know? Um, why am I here? What am I doing? 
And again, it's all about your self-truth, thinking, well, do I have to make these decisions because people aren't communicating, people aren't giving instructions, and uh, you're left to your own device on what needs to be um, done. But sometimes it's good to have clarity on your day on about the chores that need to be done and sorted and getting on with day-to-day -day activities until the day's uh, over and then that way everybody's on the same page. Um, step number 10, your clients aren't idiots. Your clients are the most smartest people in the world, well 95%, 98% anyway, the smartest people in the world. With my business, my clients are lawyers, um, police officers, um, fire brigades, um, the list just goes on and on and on and on. Um, I can't stress that enough that your clients aren't idiots and if you don't do the job properly your clients are going to recognise that um, very very quickly and say well we don't want this person because he's missed this or he hasn't done that or the job hasn't been completed uh, we don't want you, your services are no longer required, I'll see you later and they'll just get the next guy in in line so um, your clients uh, are not idiots by any means um, necessary in fact by all means if you got the opportunity you may even want to learn from your clients because at the end of the day they're your clients and they want to pay the bills and get the bills through the, the mail so um, without them you're pretty much well stuffed so your clients are very very important okay um, now I just want to talk to you about um, negativity and how to stop negativity and how to stop negativity thinking. There's a couple of scenarios that I want to get off my chest. Um, the first one I want to talk about is stop taking all the responsibility. I've noticed a lot of people in my um, life that have taken all the responsibility and replaced it all on their shoulders. To me, um, it's not needed, it's not necessary. So, um, step number one, don't take all the responsibility. I think that's very, very important. Try and share the load, etc., etc., various bits and pieces. Number two, start, pos start, start focusing on positive aspirations. Um, what that means is, is when you go to work each day, think to yourself, I'm going to have a kick-ass day. I'm going to get shit, job, shit done. Um, I'm going to draw it. Uh, I'm going to make everybody in my workplace happy. I'm going to su succeed. I'm going to kick ass rather than, hmm, looks fucking boring. Mm. I've got to go to work, man. I've got to make a living. I don't do it to pass the time. You know, again, it's all about attitude. Uh, number three, uh, stop over generalizing. A lot of business, a lot of body, body co corporates seem to make the mistake of st stop um, over generalizing. Um, at the end of the day, it was always meant to be um, the case. Um, you know, there's just really nothing you can do. Besides getting in there and doing the best you can, no matter what scenario scenarios may bunk, bunk up. Um, now, um, step number four. See the problems and challenges that lie ahead. This may not necessarily be about negativity. This may be about seeing the challenges that lie ahead and thinking to yourself, well, okay, what do I have to do to this challenge to get myself to the next level without doing any greedy or dirty deeds behind that? So, um, in saying that, um, moving along. Step number five. Recognise negativity, thoughts and patterns. 
if you're having the same thought and the same pattern that comes into your head um, day in, day out, and you know it's wrong and you know it's based on their activity, it may be time for you guys, to, guys and females uh, to see uh, professional help. Uh, step number six. Discover the root discover the root of your negativity thoughts and beliefs. Again, that's pretty much what we talked about um, um, off top. If you can recognize the root of and the cause of your thought and your activities, um, again, it's time that you sought professional help. Um, um, tip number seven. Recognize your appreciation in life to try and block out the negativity. Appreciation in your life can be your work, it can be your family, it can be your friends, it can be your hot co-workers, it can be your sporting clubs, it can be um, life in general, it can be the area you're in. Recognize your appreciation, just say, well, fuck, how lucky am I to be here? How lucky am I to have this type of company? Um, what do I have to do to get to myself to the next level to try and succeed and to kick ass to make everybody happy and uh, the willingness to get to myself to the next level let's knock out depression let's uh, kick ass let's help that guy that's struggling with day-to-day -day activities to get the job done uh, let's do some charity work um, let's go let's let's kick ass let's um, think positive thoughts um, Tip number eight, seek the company of positive people. Now, I'm very good at this. If I see somebody that's negative, they oh, life's crap, life's boring, life's that, life's that. Uh, just get them out of your life. Um, quick. Um, the amount of negative people that I've bumped into, I've kind of thought to myself, fuck, I don't need you in my life. Um, let's get rid of get rid of them and start focusing on bringing positive people uh, into my life. There's a scenario that I've been into just recently with another person. Um, I don't know if I should fire them or not. Cause at the end of the day, I'm making that decision based on negativity and positivity. It's just one of those scenarios that um, I'm sort of waiting to see, to see how it plays out, to see sort of what the best action of attack is to uh, make my decision on that person's uh, future. That person's future could be an extra 4000 a year. That's a lot of money in Australian terms, 4000 a year. Uh, if I was that person, I'd be getting on the phone saying, Darren, is there anything I could do for you? Or, uh, you know, getting back to PR. Um, it's really been quite extraordinary along the road now. A lot of that's cost for um, reasons for my end. Um, Refolding family, friends, etc. and EDD. That's another thing. Uh, you got to speak the truth, lads, um, to all my fears out there. You must tell the truth. If you don't tell the truth, I'm sorry, you're fucked. Um, you're going to get filed out along the line, lines very, very quickly. Uh, it doesn't matter what circumstances you're in, life, family, friends, co-workers, relationships. If you don't tell the truth, they are going to find out very, very hard and very, very quickly. It's a big like what Harrison Ford said. Women always know the truth and my God, was he right. Um, uh, moving along. Don't act the victim. I've made this mistake in the workplace where I've acted the victim, which I was, but, um, but at the end of the day, I realised that if I can get money for making other people around that workplace happy and to relieve the pressure from them, then chances are, um, it's going to make everybody else happy in the workplace and 
um, etc., etc. But again, that decision is totally based on to you. Am I in the right workplace? Am I in the right scenario? Um, um, is there other work available if I was to give this work up? Very, very important to consider that option as well. Um, so, if there's no other work available, then you're in the workplace that you are. Uh, maybe it's best to write it out with that workplace, but what you can do is you fight for your time, and when you get your free time, you don't sit on your fucking ass and watch TV and do nothing. You work on your personal development and say, well, how can I get to the next level so I can get to the next workplace that I need to be in? Um, um, anyway, by developing yourself self and new skills around you. There was a guy that I knew, he was self-employed for many, many years and did a good job, but what he was actually doing was, he was self-employed, uh, doing day-to-day -day regular activities, uh, but what he did was he actually worked as self-employed to get himself up to the next level as employment, and I thought that was just absolutely um, brilliant and good um, thinking and uh, I will take that on board and maybe even do it myself down the track so um, there are benefits that you get by being employed employed under an employee rather than being self-employed I might do another show on that in the near future um, number 10 um, get a life coach I can't stress that enough the biggest mistake I made by living in Melbourne was not getting a life coach. Um, plain and simple. If I was to get a life coach and went to free help cinemas, my skills would have improved ten times dramatically by getting a free, uh, by getting a health coach and by getting myself to the next level very, very quickly. Health coaches have got all the connections and various bits and pieces like that and again, getting a life coach can actually set you up with your work by getting bigger bigger and stronger um, contracts. If there were life coaches in Gippsland where I'm associated in, I would be bang in there in a second writing them out a check if they were any good to so, say, well, shit, how can we get this guy to the next level with um, health coaches and going to free health centers and uh, various bits and pieces like that, they're going to have all the connections and all the know-how. So getting a good life coach is incredibly important. And again, it's about um, knowing what you want to do because getting a health coach can sort of sit down and say, well, shit, Darren, what do you want to do with yourself? How can I get myself to the next level um, in your personal development, let me help you, and then that way I can help myself. So getting a life coach, uh, especially my period in Melbourne, that was one of my biggest mistakes because I didn't do it, but at the time I didn't realise it wasn't a mistake, and now I'm sort of kicking myself thinking, damn, I should have got a life coach when I was 18. Um, who cares if you have to fork out the money? They're there to help you to get to your next big phase. Uh, I can't stress that enough, um, ladies and gentlemen. If you get yourself a life coach or somebody that knows what they're doing and somebody that knows how to succeed in day-to-day -day life, um, getting a life coach is critical, especially if you're in the United States of America. If you're in America and there's bits and pieces like that, a life coach like in New York City, Chicago, Washington DC, um, Seattle. If you want to get a life coach, it could change your life for the better for day-to-day -day activities. Um, um, I can't stress that enough. So if you can afford to get yourself a proper life coach, um, it's going to be just so awesome and the opportunities should be endless yeah there are some shit life coaches out there again you'll have to do your research to know what's a good life coach and what's a shit life coach uh so do your research and i'm sure that they've got plenty of things on the internet about life coaches and the way how to go about them and the way how to get the best life coach and maybe just interview two or three and see what 
is the best that's suited for you at the time. So I think life coaches are incredibly important. Uh, that's one of the reasons why people land the top jobs, um, salary of 100,000 a year, 200,000 a year. It's because the networking skills with the life coaches are just brilliant. Like they just know their shit. So if you are to land a perfect life coach, he or she could set you up for the rest of your life and to create eight better friendships and better bonds, it's the only way to go. Uh, so yeah, if I had my time again in Melbourne, the first thing I would say to God is, I need a life coach, um, get me one. So uh, in saying that, hopefully that won't be the case in the next lifetime, but uh, we shall see. I love the people from Melbourne, don't get me um, um, wrong. If I had my chance, now I'll probably go back to Melbourne for a couple of months myself and uh, try and get things off the ground, things that I simply cannot do um, up here. And I think Melbourne's um, fantastic because it adds, it adds versatility and you can choose what you want to do in various bits and pieces like that. Like the choice in Melbourne is just absolutely in in credible to what you wanted to, to do and what you wanted to see succeeding life. So I miss that aspect of uh, Melbourne and living in the city. So uh, there are differences between living in the country and um, um, the city. I'll explain that to you one day on one of the um, uh, channels. So yeah, let's see how we're going for time. I think that's good.